going on everyone welcome to the nerd bar and welcome to another large action figure slash toy haul this is all masters of the universe classics stuff so uh i've accrued this gigantic haul over the course of uh, a few weeks now i have uh, quite a few figures which i'll show you i have a couple of vehicles and then one large playset right here plus i actually have some He-Man Masters of the Universe comic books. So let's start this gigantic freaking haul uh, showing you the comic books that I bought. So I went to actually a half price books and I found this series here. It's called He-Man The Eternity War, as you can see there. And this is issue number one. And I started flipping through these issues in their bin and I just really, really loved the artwork on the cover. Uh, so it looks like it's a gigantic war between evil warriors, the heroic warriors, the snake men, the horde. It just looks really, really cool. So I'm not going to go through all of these, but I'll show you some of the cool covers there. There's another one right there. Uh, this one is really, really awesome. She-Ra. Right there. I got all of the uh, comics in this series. There's 15 issues. And uh, the one that actually stood out the most to me, let me show you that cover. When I saw this cover, I knew that I wanted to get it. And this cover just, it's crazy because if you're familiar with the old He-Man cartoon, you're familiar with a very, very specific image. And this right here is the opposite of that image. So there is Skeletor basically saying he has the power with the power sword. I saw this cover right here. This is issue number 10, and uh, this is what kind of drew me in. Seeing Skeletor with the power sword, I have the power. Freaking crazy. But I did get the entire series. It is 15 issues. Uh, but yeah, it looks like just a gigantic war. I mean, there's He-Man right there versus a snake warrior. And then this one right here, this is the final issue. Really, really cool. So there are some comic books that I actually purchased. I can't tell you anything about this series. I haven't read it yet. Uh, I can't recommend it yet. All I know is the cover art is beautiful. So if you're into He-Man and you want to try something new like, like me, pick these up. You could probably find them at a half price books. They were only $1.50 each for me. So got all 15 issues. All right, moving on to the action figures. I did purchase a couple of loose action figures. And uh, I've been buying this stuff for the last three, four weeks. And I quite honestly, I forgot where I got some of this stuff because I've just been buying so much of it. eBay, Toy Department, Mike's Vintage. I mean, just a bunch of different places. I even got a couple things at Comics to Games. They had some He-Man figures. So I've just been acquiring stuff. And I've been waiting to film this thing to show you all the stuff that I bought. But I did get the Battle Armor He-Man. I know I got this one at Mike's Vintage. So shout out to you. But uh, there it is. This was actually my favorite looking He-Man uh, back in the 80s toy line. I just really, really loved the fact that uh, he had the battle armor. And basically with the old 80s toy, you tapped on this part right here, the chest piece, and it flipped down and revealed more and more battle damage. Um, there was no action feature on this Mattel uh, Masters of the Universe Classics, but they do include some alternate chest plates, which you can actually just pop in there. And then there's the one that is not battle damage. So it's cool that they actually give you, you know, a chance to kind of recreate that action feature. There's no action feature, but it's just cool that they do that. So there is He-Man, Battle Armor He-Man, probably my favorite looking He-Man figure. The other uh, loose figure that I got is Web Store. And I know that uh, some of the evil warriors, actually some of the figures in general from the Masters of the Universe Classics line are um, going for a lot of money on the secondary market. So expensive and web store was one of the ones that was kind of up there in price so i saw that uh toy department actually had this one loose loose and complete has the gun has the little grappling hook thing and uh, i uh, decided to get it so web store is very very cool and there's his back and his little arms are articulated there they got a little joint in the back there so very very awesome there is web store and evil warrior all right, moving on to two figures that I don't plan to take out of package. I actually want to buy the rest of the ones in this wave and keep them on card just because they remind me so much of the old Masters of the Universe uh, figures from the 80s. 
because of the card art. So for those that don't know, Super 7 actually took over the license from Mattel and they decided to put out this Ultimates set. And there's only, I think there's only five figures in this set. I have two of the five figures. But again, I do plan to buy the rest of them and just keep them on card um, because they're just so freaking gorgeous looking on card. But there's Faker. And these are going for a lot of money. Uh, these are really super expensive. I think this one is over $100. But there's Faker. Uh, he comes with a couple different face sculpts. I know that the original Faker that Mattel did came with this face sculpt. But they did this one right here for this Ultimates line. And I really like that face sculpt. That's very, very awesome. But there you go. Comes with the full power sword, the half power sword, the axe. Just awesome and then the shield down there. But there is Faker. And again, there's the classic looking packaging. And even on the back, they have the little animation, the little kind of um, artwork that they used to include on the back of the packages from the 80s. Just freaking awesome. I love it. I apologize right now if I say freaking awesome a lot during this video, but uh, I've just gotten so into these Masters of the Universe Classics figures and they just, they're awesome. There it is again. They remind me of my childhood. They remind me of the 80s. They remind me of, you know, when toys were the best. But uh, I'm glad that Mattel and Super 7 are doing these figures again in this Classics line. And then here's the other one I got, Ram Man. And for those that are not aware, that is an orange Ram Man because the original art on the back of these uh, figures, he was orange, he was not red. He was red in the cartoon, obviously, but on this art back here, he was orange. So this is kind of like a throwback to the figure itself, not so much the animation version of Rayman. But there he is. He's gigantic. Comes with that alternate head. Comes with the axe. All right, and moving on to the Mattel figures that I picked up, I'm gonna kind of do these two at a time. Uh, some of these figures really, really intrigue me. I collected He-Man from the start of the line in the early 80s, but I kind of fell off when the cartoon ended. The cartoon ended, I believe, in 1985. There were still some figures that came out after the cartoon ended, though. Uh, and those figures, they had toy commercials for them, so you saw those commercials on TV and Saturday morning cartoons and whatnot. And all these characters came out, but you never saw them on the cartoon. So now that they're redone in this classics line, uh, that nostalgic part of me really kind of reminisces to the fact that these characters never appeared on the cartoon. So I just think it's very, very cool uh, that they're really made specifically for the people that collected the toys. And here's one of them. This is Ninjor. I think they lost the licensing rights to the name because he's called Ninja Warrior. But this is Ninjor. And for those that are not aware, there was a toy commercial that came out. And this was, again, after the cartoon ended. And uh, it was Clamp Champ, and Clamp Champ was fighting in the commercial Ninjor. So he's basically a ninja warrior uh, on Eternia. He's an evil warrior, works for Skeletor. But I just thought that this was so cool. And then here is the back. And it's funny because the, the back of this card, if you read the back of the card, he act, it actually says Ninjor right there. Um, so I'm not sure why they can't actually just call him Ninjor. Why they have to call him Ninja Warrior, but it's on the back of the card. So there you go. There's one. This other one here, they actually never, ever made a figure for it. Uh, and he did appear on the cartoon. He was actually in three episodes. Uh, he was a heroic warrior. He defended Castle Grayskull. But his name is Lizard Man. And again, he was in a few episodes of the cartoon. Never, ever got an action figure in the 80s. And there he is right there. But he's a good guy, so this is cool, uh, because I never obviously owned him when I was a kid. All right, here's another one of those figures that I was talking about that came out after the cartoon ended, and he is another heroic warrior. And uh, he is the arch nemesis of Dragstore, which you'll see a little bit later. You could probably see him behind me. But this is the good guy, Extendar. And uh, basically he's kind of part cyborg and he extends. Um, the original version obviously had action features where you could actually extend his limbs. This one does not, but you can actually put in these extensions and give him that look. Where it looks like his arms are extended, necks extended, stuff like that. But there you can see on the back how he is in his extended form. Looks like his torso, legs, 
and I believe his arms also extend, but really, really cool. There is Extendar, and again, this is one of those figures that came out after the cartoon ended. Uh, so you, you saw him on toy commercials, but you never saw him on the cartoon. All right, moving on to uh, some evil warriors that I picked up, and this is one that you absolutely recognize from the cartoon, from the toy line. Evil Lynn. So I got the Evil Lynn figure, and she is looking very, very awesome. To me, the original Evil Warriors are Skeletor, Evil Lynn, Trapjaw, Merman, Triclops, Beast Man. So she's one of those original ones that you just have to have in your collection if you collect uh, Motu Classics. But there is Evil Lynn. Moving on to two more Evil Warriors that I picked up here. Here is Clawful. And I remember distinctly really, really liking Clawful and Whiplash. I used to use those bad guys a lot when I played with my toys in the 80s, but this is really, really awesome. A cool update to the character. Here is his claw. And uh, comes with that green weapon there, but he's very, very awesome. And I can't wait to pick up Whiplash, and I'll probably uh, display the Clawful next to the Whiplash on my shelf, but... There he is, Clawful. And I also picked up Too Bad. I actually got this one at, uh, I think I got this one at TransFan 2 Shop and Look, actually. They had a few Masters Classics figures, and uh, I've seen this one there before, and I finally picked it up. So there is Too Bad. He is very, very cool. Got the two heads. Basically, it's uh, like two monsters kind of stuck together, like a Siamese monster. But he's an evil warrior. All right, moving right along, I have some Horde figures that I'd like to share here. For those that are not aware, there's basically uh, three sets of bad guys in Eternia. There's the Evil Warriors led by Skeletor, there's the Snake Men, and then there is the Horde led by Hordak. So here is the Hordak that I picked up. They've actually done a few versions of Hordak. This is the Buzzsaw version of Hordak, and I think I got this one from... Big Bad Toy Store. I think it was on sale for in the 20s, like 26 bucks. So got a good deal on Hordak. Very, very cool. And again, no action features, but you can display him like he looked back in the 80s toy line where that little buzzsaw is kind of launching from his chest. I don't think it actually like shoots out or anything like that. It's just kind of there for looks. But there is Buzzsaw Hordak. Very, very cool there. And then another member of the Horde, Mantenna. This guy is awesome. I loved having this figure as a kid. He's uh, just very distinct looking, very kind of creepy looking with that face and those, those eyes. And there you go there. And you can see that the eyes do pop out. On the original version from the 80s, the eyes did bug out, they popped out. I don't think they do on this version. I think, I think they're just there. They might pop out, I'm not sure. I haven't opened it yet, but just a very, very nice looking figure right there. And this one is kind of up there in price. This was uh, $80, maybe $90, something like that. But that's Mantenna. All right, two more figures and two more members of the Horde. You can see I kind of loaded up on uh, Horde members. I'm actually only missing, I think, one uh, of the core Horde. That's kind of hard to say. Core Horde members. I'm missing Leech. But I did pick up Grizzlor, so he is very furry. There's Grizzlor. There's the back right there. And then the other member of the Horde that I have, which uh, this one came out after the show, after She-Ra, after He-Man. This is Dragstore. And uh, they were kind of getting kind of crazy with uh, some of the ideas that they had for figures. He's got a giant wheel in his belly. And uh, back in the 80s toy, he actually had like a little ripcord. And you pulled the ripcord and the wheel would start spinning and you could lay the figure on the ground and he would actually roll. Uh, so they were getting a little gimmicky towards the end of the toy line. This one does not roll, but he does have that wheel in his chest, which is very cool. So he's kind of like half car, half monster. Uh, again, kind of out there, but I just love the fact that Mattel did a classic version of Drag Store. All right, one more figure, and then we're going to get to the uh, vehicles and then the playset. set. Uh, this is part of the Horde, and uh, this one is actually... You could change him around and you can make him look different ways. And his name is Modulok. So there is Modulok. And just like the 80s toy, again, you could take off his limbs and kind of build your own monster. So that is how he looks. And you can do all these different combinations here. I can't wait to open this one up and display this one. 
but there is Moduloc. So there's a few more that I'm actually missing from the horde. I am missing Mosquitor, Shadow Weaver, Radlor, uh, and Leech. Leech is the one that I really want because I remember he was part of like the initial group of the horde. All right, moving on. I did pick up a, uh, it's kind of a vehicle. It's, um, it's an animal that you can ride, <laughs> but it's not Stridor. It's the evil version of Stridor. It is Night Stalker. And the thing I can remember about Night Stalker, first of all, he's very, very cool looking. The thing I can remember about him is uh, Jitsu actually rode him around a lot. I don't have a Jitsu figure. I definitely want a Jitsu. Uh, so I'm going to be looking for that one. But there is Night Stalker. Again, this is like the, the evil warrior's version of Stridor. I don't have a Stridor. I would love to have one. But that is what Night Stalker looks like. Very cool. And there's Jitsu. Absolutely want that figure. It is up there in price. I've been watching a couple on eBay, but it's uh, it's pricey. So that's definitely one that's on my list. Jitsu right there. All right, and then I also picked up this right here. This is the Jet Sled with this character, Sky High. Sky High was basically like a generic character. I remember watching the cartoon and they would always have these jet sleds. They used them a lot in the cartoon. And then you would have this guy just kind of like piloting it. And there was a bunch of those guys. So they were kind of like generic army builders, but it's cool that they did a figure for him. So there is, and they gave him a name, Sky High, but there is this jet sled. Let me show you something really cool. I picked up the battle ram also. And if you see this version right here, it's got the dragon and the dragon head right there. If I can remember correctly from the cartoon, the good guys always use the ones with the dragon head and the bad guys use jet sleds also, but theirs had a little snake head. So if you look at this battle ram here that I picked up, which I still haven't unboxed it, I definitely need to do that. It comes with the cool man at arms figure, but it comes with the evil warriors version with the snake head. So you can actually switch these out. You can take that jet sled out of the battle ram and replace it with the proper one right there that the good guys used. So very, very awesome. I like how they did that. All right, this brings us to playset time. And uh, here is one of the playsets <laughs> that I purchased. But this is Point Dread and the Talon Fighter. So in this box set here, you actually get both the Talon Fighter. There it is right there. Uh, you get a uh, Tila figure, which is cool because I don't have a Tila. And then you get Point Dread, which is basically this right here that the Talon Fighter can attach to. And one of the things that's very, very cool about this is you can actually take this part right here and attach it to Castle Grayskull if you have it. It's a large box. It's very large. But there is the back of the box. And that is Point Dread and the Talon Fighter. <laughs> these, these boxes keep getting bigger and bigger and heavier and heavier. Uh, this is a grail for me. This is something that I have always wanted. This is something that I regret not buying when it was first solicited and when it first came out. Um, I never had a Castle Grayskull when I was a kid. And I, uh, as soon as I saw that Mattel was doing a classics version of Castle Grayskull, it was huge very expensive. I wanted it, but I didn't pull the trigger on it and then I missed out on it. So it's always been at the very, very tippy top of my want list and I finally got it. So here it is. I gotta stand all the way back to get it in frame. This is Castle Grayskull, the classics version. Look at that art on this box. I cannot wait to take this thing out and put it on a table and display it with all my Masters of the Universe Classics figures. This is amazing. And then here is the other side of the box. You can see how large it is with the guy in the picture there. But uh, it is big, it is heavy, it's a gigantic freaking box, and it was a grail, and I'm so absolutely happy that I was able to pick this up. I've been picking up a lot of play sets recently. Pick this one up. I picked up one that you're gonna see in actually the next video. Uh, from Superpowers. Uh, very, very cool there. Uh, I picked up Boulder Hill from Mask. So there's a couple G.I. Joe ones that I want next, but I'm absolutely so happy to pick up Castle Grayskull. I also saw that Super 7 is actually going to release a Snake Mountain playset. 
uh, and I am absolutely 100% down for that. So as soon as that pre-order goes live, I'm going to pick that up, pay it off. It's going to be pricey, but I need it in my collection. So just very, very happy. The Masters of the Universe classics are something that I've always wanted to kind of start collecting, but I never did. I'm not sure why. Probably because I was uh, preoccupied with stuff like Hot Toys and Mezcos and other stuff like that. But uh, I'm glad that I finally got started on this kick and uh, I'm so happy with everything that I've picked up. So I will continue to be buying more Masters of the Universe Classics figures. I'll share them in my future videos. But that's it. My next video, like I mentioned, it does. it's kind of a random toy haul. There's some vintage stuff, some superpower stuff. There's some Marvel Legends stuff. There's a Pop. There's a Thundercats Classics figure. Uh, and then there's two Mezco. So it's just kind of a smorgasbord of uh, figures. And then the one after that, I have been picking up a few Hot Toys figures. I had quite a few Hot Toys figures from Sideshow that I've been paying off over the last like six months and they all kind of released at the same time. So um, I'm pretty much broke now because I had to pay all those off at the same time. But I have, I believe it is seven or eight Hot Toys figures. So uh, not the next video, the video after that is going to be a gigantic Hot Toys haul can't wait to show you that but some very very cool pieces in there some stuff from infinity war some stuff from thor ragnarok star wars just some really good stuff there so thanks for watching liking commenting subscribing and sharing if you like this video give a thumbs up i absolutely appreciate it and i will see you guys in the next video adios